but once re God recognizes self, God also disappears. Like when you truly recognize the self, the self disappears, right? It's like the wind, when it comes to wind, the sky becomes the sky. It doesn't feel itself, it doesn't label itself. The only reason why you're not like as vast as the sky is because of the things that you haven't looked at. That's it. Doing nothing is like lifting weights, bro. Especially in the beginning where you haven't done nothing ever before, you know? Yeah, all cameras it, it comes down to that really, <laughs> just sensation, trying to entangle other sensations. The, the way I always describe it is the middle way is more like what transcends both sides of the duality, which includes both sides of the duality. But you need to kind of max out on both sides to be able to transcend them. So. Yeah, whatever you're feeling as a ground is the curricula for dissolution. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I mean, what more can we, like, the end of measurement? There's nothing much to say, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here we are, Frank Yang, welcome back. Hello, Alice. <laughs> it's good to see your teeth. You too. Same. How have you been? Just, <laughs> it's so good. So good, my brother. You yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really happy we took that long <laughs> break so that we could deepen. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. Yeah. Somebody asked me if uh, awakening is like an on and off switch or it goes on forever. I said both. Right. Yeah. yeah. I said there is an on and off switch, at least for me. And then the integration, whatever you want to call it, the deepening of the realization, it goes on forever. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not the one who said that. I mean, I, I, I agree with that, but I hear a lot of people. Say because right. like life itself is integration, right? And life, the, that's what I like to call it the information shifter now because it's constantly morphing, you know? It's constantly shape shifting. Right. Yeah, that's life. Yes. Even though the state, Even like, the you state, want, whatever you want to call it, non duality, natural state, you want to call it, after the shift, right. it's after the same. The but the, how it's manifested and integrated to your, yes. it changes every nanosecond. Like you said, it's like, uh, you said it earlier, it's like a workout, like a constant daily workout. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And recently you were talking about becoming the best athlete. Yes. Yes. I always use that. Yeah. The difference is though, after realization, after the doership is annihilated, it just happens. Like whatever right. integration that's going to happen, it just happens. Right. And your desire is absolutely no different from life's desire. Right. Yeah, and, and then I realized that the deeper the realization is whatever you do, even though it's not under control, it's, it's just what life, it, it's the best place to life itself. Yeah. It's like you can't go, you can't go wrong. Yeah. 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 Like there are certain things I have to like, oh, but it's not like, oh, I got to like go oh, for that. Oh, I got to start and meditate to a Like all that's been dissolved. Right, right. But the places that this thing is taking me, like, what if you want to call it universal world, that's taking over the personal world. You realize that it, it's taking you a place that you're never expected before. And there's not a, there's not a voice in your head saying, it shouldn't be this way, or this yeah, couldn't be this way, or right. it shouldn't be any other way. That voice is gone. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like now zero you're just in the, uh, to all sensations. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even... It's like you sit in the back seat, like pretty much. Right. That's, that's the only analogy I can right. think of. And right. then before you were sitting in the front seat, you were driving as the ego. And then throughout the integration, you kind of, at first you're in the back seat, you're like, okay, fuck. Crazy. This just like God just gave me this like infinite car to drive. How do I drive this? I don't know. We even know what the key, what are the buttons, right? And then you try to figure out how to drive it. But then after a while, I just realized, wait, the car's driving itself. You don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. And then the places that this car was taking you, you just like in the backseat with your feet up. Yeah, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. you just unexpected places. Yeah. 
but it's not even it's not even a, a point of expectation it's not even like oh my god i didn't expect it it's just oh okay this yeah. is what it's supposed yeah. to be yeah <laughs> yeah since our last conversation so many more of the things that you had been sharing became deeper and deeper in direct experience and realized and the most shattering dissolving one was shifting from the concept of god uh into emptiness oh okay yeah yeah and then that yeah. that was a whole different uh realization yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to, so we don't confuse our viewers uh, I still use the word God but I use that interchangeably uh, to like reality or business or just the mind or whatever like you know, some people like God and I can see that word are just confused right but and this is but the we key can thing talk about the, the shift and the, um, and um. the key thing it was being a person with the concept versus being the Nothing, yeah, the yeah, nothingness, yeah. the energy itself, which yeah. isn't a thing, and it's everything. And so yeah. that that shift happening in the spring was crazy. And yeah, I, I, it, and I then that's that. where the no, the no doership and the no center started emerging more and more yeah. organically. And I noticed that that emptiness and love being those two sides of the same coin started emerging more and more too Even so more and more this, yeah so this the spaciousness and the surrender to whatever was arising was so taking over and it was so beautiful yeah. and perfect no resistance yeah, to yeah. any to any experience or sensation yes. there even if it would be some like roaring of someone's conditioning in a yelling screaming way there would just be equanimity even mm -hmm. even if it would pinball off into some uh w desire to respond for a second that that equanimity would just i'm so open to healing this <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah man but... like one of the insight that i got was bondage is freedom even even when you feel True contracted, way. yeah. Even when you feel contracted, sometimes it's not really contraction anymore. It's just the the, the means of doing its thing due to the cause and effect of the universe, you know, different origination, whatever. So it's like before there was a, a resistance to that resistance, or another thing is that before you were still trying to let go, like you're trying to surrender, then. You realize that there's no point to try to surrender after you sort of let go of letting go. You stop giving a fuck about like I'm I'm, I'm trying to create this space. I'm trying yeah. to be this awareness. <laughs> when shit arises, like now I gotta do my like, do my like you know right, right, right. expansion thing. But I mean, it just happens. Yeah, right. or like, like try to like get back into a certain state. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Every state now is equally valid. Yeah. yeah. Even the stages of awakening, what we talk about. See, when I was making that, list, I was, I was, I know, I know this hierarchy is ultimately false, but I was slightly attached to the, uh, the no self emptiness uh, phase mm -hmm. because I was going through that. That mm -hmm. was the phase I was in. I had just stepped out of the cockpit. And uh, now even that's gone. The self and no self integrated together. Like that's really like your desire, the universe. Desire. You want to even call it desire. One, the, right. like the human aspect, very important. Yeah, yeah, and that has uh, beautifully come up as bringing the celestial, terrestrial, or the the air into Earth. However, yeah, yeah, yeah. And making it cellular, uh, electromagnetic. Making it cellular. Yeah. Like making it every moment, not just like sometimes, you know, or like as a concept. Yeah, it's the uh, the infinite and the finite. Right, and I and I'm feeling more and more that sort mm -hmm. of that that end of it all 
seeking um also expressed similarly like you were just referencing which is very much like the middle way like even bondage is freedom itself exactly, and so yeah. there's there's no urge to change anything so yeah. meaning it's all perfect as it is and so um there's no desire to change infinity to wake up because yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's i even lost that desire to, to talk about this stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's like the like i said earlier really, every state is equally valid you know the ego state like the awareness state is whatever um, god god state ram and love no self emptiness it's all it's all the same mm. but one but once you're going through it it's like holy fuck i thought that was it this is something else yeah yeah but all of that is just a reaction of the rest of it. Completely. Even the labels of the Even different the stages, you know, or, or the experiences of it, you know, experience either like spiritual highs or spiritual lows, or highs or highs however you want to quantify it. it it's right. just the, the, the it's remainder just of the, the seeker or the remainder of the, the conditioning is still trying to figure out what the fuck is going to, on. But he's still dissolving. The process of dissolving, the process of physically dissolving your body, mind, and your greater experience, that process is the same process from the beginning. But the, the mind, the mind responds to those different openings. And it's a little different, a little different taste in each stage. You know? And the more you dissolve, the bigger the opening. And the more you experience like divinity, yes. or light, whatever. Yes. You know, and then after a while, even that's uh, integrated and dissolved. Like I said, like you know, once God recognizes God, God also disappears. Like right. when you really recognize this self, the self disappears, right? It's like the wind, when you come to wind, the sky becomes the sky. It doesn't feel itself, it's like Right. Right. And it's been really important for the seeker to exhaust itself in the process to sort of keep going as the sense of self doesn't feel like it's gone and then question, well, what is the cause of the proliferation of that identity and location and sense of mm -hmm. others and that kind of thing. And then um, that's really been a helpful way of, of looking at it is this sort of proliferation from spaciousness or from emptiness, like just seeing those proliferations, seeing where there's resistances. Well, why is there no, why is there a resistance there? Mm -hmm. And then like kind of turning the eye on itself and just being like, where is it in the body? What, right. what have I, what have I locked in cellularly into a contraction somewhere? And mm -hmm. is it something about my life, something about some stories, some traumas, some shadows, and how can I ease my way into it and sort of unlock that and, and, uh, let that go, express it and let it go. Yeah. yeah. Just the stuff that you get to look at really, the stuff that you haven't, yeah. the only reason why you're not like, is the sky is because things that you haven't looked at. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and most people like spend their whole life running away from, from that. Yeah. You know, like that's why you tell normal people to just sit down for like um, 10 minutes, not even a retreat. Just don't do anything for 20 minutes. They wouldn't want to do it. They yeah. wouldn't want to look at the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the nature of it reveals itself through do nothing and yeah it's yeah really, and it's really scary that's why uh, yeah. it's very scary yeah. especially at towards the end when there's like a tiny bit of resistance on the left but then even though know, the sensations are tiny the effect of like the, the trigger point is huge because that's the right. only thing that your whole life is dependent on uh, it's like if you let go you're gonna die and if you don't let go you're gonna there's nothing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's why I did Shanti calls it the, the wicked of the gut. Yeah. It's like, you know, you look at this, let's just look at a very physiological matter. Like your whole body design. It usually starts with the head, hopefully in the waking of the mind, the heart, the solution of the chest there. And then all the deepest conditions are stored in the gut. Like yep. Close to the dick. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when you have that opener, that's when you lose the doer. Yeah. Like when you open up the mind, you know, you lose the, the seer, thinker, here, whatever. But then when you go all the way down, the bottom of your nervous system, that's when the, the doership 
knobs and like it, it's the same process it's just gets deeper and deeper yeah so it is for my the, the doer with the last one to come up. right uh, right the gut and those lower energy centers oh, are such yeah. a deep store of those yeah. Yeah. Uh, that really badly want to be expressed to be released uh into greater freedom into sky yeah um, yeah yeah. Mm. yeah yeah and a big part of the end of seeking is also the end of questions also so, oh yes, right, so. yeah, we can definitely talk about that. <laughs> no more, yeah. The, 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 the desire for you, right? And right. It's like the way I describe the spiritual seeker is commentary in your head. Like it's just voice in your head that's commenting on this process that's already happening by itself. It's not like you, you can do anything about it. I mean, during the process, sure, you just feel like you have to try hard for most people, but after a while, you. There's nothing you could do about it. And the, the voice in your head is commenting on this. Oh, where you're on the path, or question things about reality, you know, what is reality, what is consciousness, what is God, uh, what is this made out of? And then right. at the end, this, the voice is complete. I'm so quiet. There's right. no more questions coming in. Right. And every one uh, of those questions is so important for the seeker's journey. Yeah and, yeah, and and there's a way to be more efficient by asking those bigger questions off the bat as quickly as you can. Like, what what is reality? What is God? What is this field? What right. what is all right. of this? Um, yeah, as what is a sensation? What is energy? If you really get to that stuff faster, in, instead of like playing in the noise, let's say, um, find the needles in the haystack. Right, right, um, and then it'll create a greater um, dis dissolution of the center faster. Um, mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's why a lot of people that go on the path, they start asking those questions for young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, I think it's important to question. But uh, at the end, the answer is right. Everything is that. I mean, yeah. that's what the Zen koan, every single Zen koan has the same answer. It's just this. Right. Yeah. But then you, it's so difficult to talk about this because when you tell people this is it or like, is this, it, unless you went through the whole unfoldment, it's very difficult to understand what you're talking about. They're going to relate their current levels of like consciousness to the what is. So a lot of people just go, oh, there's nothing to do. But the what is before and after the, the path is. Uh, finish it at least to that point uh, is completely different. I would say it's like I always tell people: you put the the Frankie Brown in this experience right now, which is quite ordinary. Like even just like a month before uh, you know, the shift, he will lose his mind. Yeah, right. yeah, but it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and another good way to put it that. We'll, I feel like we'll continue elaborating on in the content that we create is that there there seems to be so, some sort of a like a, a like a heads up display that has a bunch of like concepts and ideas and identities and whatnot and the inquiry process is sort of like dissolving those like assumptions and identities and location and all that kind of stuff and then you sort of that loop closes on on itself and you sort of see right. you see what it's like to not have a heads up display like where, mm. where there's no identity no location no ideas no concepts total innocence um just beautiful surrender um you know that kind of thing and it's a really good analogy in some ways to, to video games. People are aware right. of playing the games with the heads up display and what it's like to not have a, a display of tons and tons of little icons basically and stuff that you're constantly managing with your mind and like pinballing yourself between them endlessly. Um, so it's like the cessation of that thousands of times. Yeah, so it's like when the video game just place itself, there's no need to have icons telling the user what to do, pretty much. Yeah. 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 
even the icon of emptiness and love. And even yeah. I am, yeah. exactly. Even emptiness and like, no self, even, even awakening. Uh, right. Uh, uh, but it's really hard to follow when you first discover this. Like you go down the path and you attain those different realization, you access those different states of consciousness and you let all that go. In a sense, it's almost like, I think Ramana Mahashi said something similar when he said, like, one of his, like, final teachings, like, oh, most people are not ready for that. This is the, it's the part of the spiritual ego, the, the, the part of the seeker. Part of the seeker just has to end. Yeah. And then you go on the spiritual path and you dissolve, all the, supposedly dissolve all the, the program, but you still sitting on the program of spirituality. That last program, there's a place like that you can't even see. Yeah, and the, the solution of that, it's really, it's, like we talked about earlier, for me, it was like the, the core, like the gut. Right. And it's not like spirituality itself is the problem. It's just that the rest of the company has to hang out with one. So when you use spirituality to just, uh, dissolve everything else, the rest of the, the tiny bit of the something like that's like in the bottom of your gut, what does it have to hang out? Well, everything else I can see through, it's just going to hang out to spirituality. Yeah. Like, or you're all awakened. Right. Right. Now you're living. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there's a, such a, like a beautiful, subtle solidity of spirituality and awakening that's there. And it just, yeah, wants to proliferate itself um, around as emptiness is equal to form and that this is all infinity or endlessness and it's all one yeah, big field true. and um you investigate your sense of self to wake up and and then just letting go of even that and just yeah exactly it's just like so what's left it's just groundless and yeah it's scriptless um and it's just beauty and um and yeah, even there's just such high, it's just beautiful. E also equanimity through even the sensation that is, uh, some sort of pain or, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a whole different ballpark. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It is. It's, uh, so all the stuff you went through in spirituality is like the transcendence of the stuff, like a, a temporary transcendence of the stuff. And the dropping away of yourself, the permanent dropping away of yourself, it's in a different ballpark than any mystical state, any psychedelic state, yeah. any states. The way I describe what's left after you lost it, all transcendental state, all mystical state, all absorptions and meditation. Yes. Uh, and you can't comprehend this at all uh, with the, the rest of the solidity, with the rest of yourself. Like you just can't like, and then that's why I, I, I don't even know how to talk to people about this, you know, because I, they still kind of need some kind of anchor. Right. Yeah. Because if you give this thing to uh, a person too early, you're going to think you're, oh, you, you didn't realize anything. Well, this is kind of true. I think <laughs> like the ultimate realization is like non realization. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't even think about realization anymore, but I'm going to say, if you, if you tell them, if you, you want to share this, you still have to kind of package it in a, a more or less like a, a, a way that people can kind of use as an anchor to unpack, you know, for, for them to like heal or else. Yeah, they're either going to think like you're, you're crazy or they're going to think you're, um, you haven't done anything. Or I, I don't need to do it. Yeah. Or that, yeah. you know, there's nothing to do. Sure. Yeah. 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 And ultimately it's true, but before the seekers the top and it does feel like the in many ways the threefold training is such a direct way for the seeker to investigate itself um because morality is very common across all religions and philosophies um and so it's unique to whatever that uh, entity uh feels like is moral whatever is good and it, mm -hmm. and etc and um and of, and of course there's it feels like commonalities uh like the more that you feel the interconnection of everything um like this can't the live more ethical. 
the more ethical you are. Exactly. Like this can't live without the phytoplankton and trees. Everything's in that interdependent cycle. And so when you, and so that means all life is in that interdependent cycle with itself. And so this like living, breathing, pulsing, morphing cycle. And so then Mm -hmm. if if you really sort of anchor in that first thing of morality, which is like the, when sort of self-awareness kind of boils up, you could say that morality is one of the first places that it tends to go. And then, and then <clears throat> along with that, if concentration or focus is, is desired, um, and it's applicable to all parts of life, it's not just um, meditation and inquiry, but it's also, you know, well, why am I a slave to social media? Uh, mm-hmm. Why can't I focus for more than, Um, five seconds on someone who's talking to me why am I already lost and waiting for my my own turn to speak or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and so concentration focus uh, helps you develop in all aspects of life like even a greater sense of empathy with like listening to someone talk all of these types of ways so concentration helps and then through morality and concentration wisdom is gradually revealed more Mm -hmm. and more and I'm that's that's I feel like it's just such a classical um, perennial pointing that style that approach yeah for, for the viewers that don't know what we're talking about he's talking about the um what is it called the threefold Matter training buddhism. Bu- Bu- buddha's threefold training buddhism 101 right. morality um concentration it's like yeah, yeah. They, they Samadhi Panya. yeah. there we go yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can hear it going kind going good chanting in the background <laughs> okay, I have something to say about that. Hold on. Okay. So, this, I'm glad you brought that up and with the whole integration thing because I think the whole integration process, morality is. Yeah, I, I didn't realize how important morality is until like after I've maxed out the wisdom axis. Yeah, for some people, they. I mean, you can pretty much connect all three pillars if you just. Take one to the extreme. Um, the morality uh, layer is uh, like I said earlier, pretty much infinite. Like you can just keep going with that. Be more ethical. People, just be a better person. But the inside access, the wisdom access, there is, you know, when when it revealed, like, close to loop or whatever, losing the center part of it. But even after that, the rest of the the condition still has to be. St- I think to the, the, the emptiness and that process is all about okay? concentration too. Yeah. You, you're talking yeah. about the surfacing, right? Of those conditions. Yeah, just, yeah the surface of conditions. After right. you, after you access, you put the switch on the wall, all your conditions are not going to like, evaporate to the mm-hmm. line to truth right away. It's impossible. Like most teachers, it takes up to like seven years or like 10 years completely um in, you know i don't know how to, i'm just taking it moment by moment right now but like on the conventional level that does make sense and even though there's nothing more you can do on the, the wisdom access development after you um you know reach the end of that the, the morality part concentration you can always you be improved and the three they, they go they go um they really feel it in the way that you you can't really see unless you really bring up the morality as well. Because it's like, if you, how concentrated are you going to be to sit down and meditate or even just, you know, to if your mind is you know, filled up with what should I do or your girlfriend or like just to have the things that you did, right? Self and stuff. Right? Yeah. And yep. you, can, you don't have concentration. You can't penetrate reality. You mm-hmm. can't like, you know, develop solidity and you can't reveal the world. And the more wisdom you have, the more you can see, holy shit, I'm such an asshole. Or I was, it's to a certain degree, you know, I can always be a better person. Yeah, yeah. And then mm-hmm. concentration also, can also help you like, see clearly, yeah. not just yourself, but how you interact. Yeah. Um, the yes. Yeah. I'm noticing that um, <clears throat> in- integration is the, 
terrestrialization or the earthing or the embodiment of the celestial and whatnot, the air, um, yeah, the realizations exactly. and the insights. And the integration I've noticed has a deepening when one distances themselves a little bit at least from the games of identity and the games of civilization um, the games of self and others yeah. and lack and all yeah. that stuff. So meaning the more time that you take, and this is why, again, alone, it, you know, alone, yeah. alone, because just like in the Theravada Buddhism, uh, the the retreats, the 10 day silent retreats. Um, right. Those you, you're you're you. you do you know how to mm. shut up for 10 straight days and not say a word? Do you know how to not use technology for 10 straight days? Um, do you know how to not talk to people? All that kind of stuff. And what you see is that in your integration, if you also stop all your social media postings and communications, you stop texting and calling, um, and only just tune into like the go, go and wake up and sunbathe, like lay out in the sun, listen to nature, to mother nature, um, go to the gym, take care of your body, the fitness side, the nutrition side of things, and just lay and do nothing, be nothing, be no one. Don't engage in goal achievement and attainment and just do nothing, be no one. And just keep do over, I mean, that's, that's integrating. That's training, doing nothing, it's like lifting weights, bro. Especially in the beginning where you haven't done nothing ever before, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, and you'll see how quickly that little urge to want to communicate your insight on social media. Yes. You'll, you'll, yes. you'll, yeah, yeah. You'll see that loop. Yeah. You'll finally you know see it. <laughs> I know I've been through that myself. So I can see in other people. Like, I'm not judging them because, again, I did the same thing. Like, after a shift, like, after, like, doesn't matter. I see a lot of people, like, they just go on social media and immediately just posting about it. I mean, I think that's great, too. There's awesome, like minus sides to this. I think it's great that you share because first of all, you share, you also kind of dissolve it as well. Right. So it's it's a way to dissolve right, right. You know, that that dirt to share. Then if other people get something out of it, that's great. But there can't be like a fine line. There could be a balance that you kind of if you do it too much, they can overshoot yourself. You know. But if you don't share at all that's also like right. might, middle kind of way like, middle way right it's the it, middle yeah. exactly yeah 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 right so it's it's neither exactly. neither it's not yeah neither sharing nor silence you know something like that yeah, yeah. exactly like the one of the first the first discord that the blue gave was called the middle way right so he went to those aesthetics how do you say that? Uh, that as word? Aesthetics. Aesthetics? Yes. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Sorry. Yes. Aesthetics. Right. So he met a bunch of aesthetics. I just meditated in a cave. Um, they don't even go out. They're just like, talk like they don't eat even. Uh, they're just like torturing themselves. Right. And then Buddha went through that. And he's like, this is not the way. Because you're just not creating more resistance. Are you creating this? Thing? No, this, no, that. You know? uh, and then Buddha went. I mean, he was a prince first, so he went did the whole like you know, debauchery that like, he didn't even do already, and then he went the other way of the extreme and arrest instead. Of, yeah. And then he walked out of there, and like, it has to be the other way. And right. then he told them that's this is not the way. I mean, for I guess for some people it is, but uh, at least for the people that I've seen interacted with, right. middle ways of this bad. Right. Yeah. Just like the meditation, people always ask me, should I do like contraction practices, like Vipassana mindfulness, or should I do, do meditation or just relax and surrender? I'm like, they're two sides of the same coin. Yeah. That's the same coin. And that speaks a lot that the first teaching was middle way. That, yeah. that should be a big indicator of, of this. So what what does that sort of mean to be in the middle between emptiness and form or whatever two poles that you want to like what does it mean to be in the middle or in a superposition of them both at the same time and neither of them and 
then you get into the indescribable and the ineffable and ineffable right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> the the way I always the describe it is the middle way, way is more like what transcends both sides of the duality, which includes both sides of the duality. Yeah. But you need to kind of max out on both sides to be able to transcend them. So, uh, the, the inconceivable is a really uh, interesting notion that um, emptiness is also just conceivable, right? Because it's, it's empty of conceivability. Yeah. And if you look at physics, they delve really deep into nature, reality, holding atom, you know, going down to the particles and the subatomic level, like you know, springs and the quantum level. You realize that the deeper they get into reality, the more they can see. Right. Like Richard Feynman said, you understand quantum mechanics, you talk about quantum mechanics. I think it could be said about the spectrum of reality. Do you think you understand God? Do I mean, you think you understand emptiness? Do you think you understand the self or whatever? You don't understand whatever you're trying to, because you, it's inconceivable. But then this inconceivability is not like the mind doesn't know. It's like, it's not like an ignorance of the mind. It's like you become reality so much that you can't see itself. Yeah. That's the, the, the way I describe it. Yeah. It's so, so it's not like you're going away from it. You actually experience experiences itself at a much deeper level. Your realization becomes much deeper when you let go of your identity, your identification to your realization, um, and your, your desire to know what that realization yes. or any kind of answers or questions that are generated by the mind. You know, what is reality? Um, what is conscious? You drop all that. That's when God or constant reality, at that, that point, that's not even your world happening. But it's the experience, for lack of a better word, business can yes. be itself more complete. Because if there is still a duality between like what's knowing, what's knowing it, then it's still you know right. distance there. Right. If you if you think your mind still knows something, yeah, there's still a know in the know. <laughs> <laughs> And until that point when it feels like it has fully closed the loop on itself and then there's whatever it is for it to ignite itself, um, which is really just igniting its own um, dis dissolutions of its own assumptions about um, self and others and world and identity and location all that kind of stuff um as those things fall apart then it knows itself more and more cleanly and then it ends its own seeking and it ends its own questioning and it exactly. it, it ends its own uncomfortability ends its own resistance um and it can sort of allow the rawness of sensation to be as it is and be mm -hmm. in full love with that and yeah 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 because it knows itself as the itself. Whole, as itself as this whole uh you oh, oh yeah cosmic octopus to bring that back from our um yeah, yeah it's just all of those sensings that are happening and um and there's nothing but love for itself so it just it just it just spaciously opens its heart up to whatever conditioning needs to unravel itself. And then it just holds that loving space. And um, whether it's a parent or a friend or someone that needs to heal or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what else are we? Gonna... I miss. <laughs> I just miss you so much, man. I'm. I'm so excited to play. Um, yeah, I love playing. I've I been... still love talking about this stuff. Yeah, but it's just I'm from different places. Yeah. yeah. I miss the same place, but different. You know, it's like it's not a necessity necessity for me anymore to like want to share. Yeah. Yeah. No, I still do. Share. It's not like right. it's not like a mission. Uh, like right to prove something. Or to, right. to wake up tomorrow. Well, that's gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Gosh. And that's that's the thing is, 
kind of like feeling um, the whole um, and just sort of allowing it to suffer. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, in the sense of like allowing um, the uh, polarized propaganda and the the hatred and the egos and the separation and the not knowing itself as the whole, like allowing that suffering to happen, like seeing that that is infinity knowing itself in that way and that it exactly yeah so the sort of the urge to to <clears throat> when when somebody speaks from a partial perspective when they're not like speaking from the whole there's no longer the urge to want to insert itself to change that perspective to be more holistic all oh, right only right. only when that entity turns on itself and wants to know how to feel more holistic then it's pure for um, asking a question and then seeing that itself is just reflecting to itself how to see more holistically to let go of the center to let go of the self um, and that's healing for it so it no longer f feels so charged basically just charged in some sort of um, it, it's just some sort of like hatred that it's like the social conditionings that brew in a collective where there's got to be someone to point and say is the other and then hate and then make propaganda about why to hate them. And it just happens between, you know, the two sides of the political poles in a country or um, it happens between nations in that way. Um, it's just that and then to really feel okay with that totally equanimous about that it's it's one's own healing from the social conditioning itself right right And those that can feel it can also feel it in these silences. You can feel it when you just hug your mom, dad, or friend in a long embrace and you just don't feel like you're there. Where are you? That's what we're talking about. And so even if you feel a lot of solidity, you can really feel it in these, begin to feel it in these just simple exchanges. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, tell me about that shit that you said you had earlier. Like, how did you make that? Like, was that uh, you said um, the shit from right. the identification how to right to be on that? Right. I, I'm sure that right you hear it, but right, it's like right. a lot of people can it. Oh, I mean, a lot of people have gone through that, I guess. So uh, right. Yeah. How did you feel about it? Right. So one one of the fun ways to put it is like Adi Shanti says, coming to the end of your rope. So. So, and even just in the spring, um, spring, what is right now? Fall? 
Yeah, was this summer? We're entering end of summer, entering into fall. So several months has been it's been like this, and you know I'll say even these simple things like you know Rob Berbea and seeing that freeze, which you initially hinted me towards, yeah. right? Even just these simple things like when I'm introduced to the idea of proliferation, even just that, you know that it just. What is that again? Well, it's like like papancha, right? So it's like the proliferation of the sense of self and others and identity and location, separation. Right, right, right. And what are you to say about that? Well, well, because I I hadn't made the click before that um, nibbana, the being gone, was actually about the cessation of weaving. So like you're done weaving, you've stopped weaving. So meaning you've stopped proliferating. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And so that's why. And so at that time in the spring, I was like, wow, just by sort of finding these needles in the haystack, um, right. it can sort of create a greater, like more sudden shift. And then that gradually empties um, those conditions that surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, yeah, it's just, I, I've also really sort of been enjoying um, identity-lessness. I think that's another good way to, to share what the, the, the spaciousness, um, the love feels like um and so it really feels like being more and more gone and it's uh it's quite nice and it's it's very it's very cellular it used to be very conceptual i've a and many times have been reflected that i, I have a very sharp mind and that kind of comes from the studying of so many of these concepts and ideas and <clears throat> it's so tempting especially in that's uh, the to, to exactly. Just, I know it's yeah to be yeah a, I know exactly a concept what you mean. ninja. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, you have to let go of your intellect, and that's a really hard thing to let go of. Especially if your whole life you've been conditioned to think that you're the smart person, you intellectual. Like I know I did that for like ten years, like fifteen years, and I was really I think uh, my mind, my brain, you know, how creative I was, how smart I was, the books I read, how much like smart content I was putting out. Yeah, and then. And it's, the, the irony is that a lot of people who got on the path, you know, got on the path because you know, obviously are very good thinkers. They, they question things a lot, you know, they inquire into things, and they're obviously very smart. And you know, like Sam Harris, for example, he's super smart, you know. But then, like, that's the the weapon that they've been using. But at the end, you have to let that weapon go too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that that's one of the hardest things I had to do. During yeah. the past. It's like before I was like, oh, Frank came, Frank came was a bodybuilder. And then the Frank came mind, <laughs> my mind fucker. And then, oh, uh, spirituality and jhana, god mind. But then even the gamma has to, <laughs> has to be like, oh, uh, yeah. But then the gamma becomes deeper after you let go. And I would say my intellect became sharper after I let go. Yes. Whatever you like, you right. actually you, you become it. it. That's why I say a realization cannot be a realization until you swallow the whole and digest it, and then it becomes. It. Yes. If you still look at it, if you still identify with the, if you're like intellectualizing about it, you perceiving it, experiencing it, then it's not you yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the subtle difference between the God conscious phase, God realization. And, and no self is like at the God phase, sure, you, you access this, 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 the bound, vast time, this uh, infinite awareness. But then the, that, that space is going to keep dissolving your, the rest of your body, the rest of your condition. But then once you get to the very end, it's almost like there's still a particle in the center. And if there's a particle, a point, there's going to be a circumference. But without that point, the, the conference is also. So I would say like the whole God consciousness thing or like Jonas and all this because 
it's still a thing for a lot of people because there's still a point here you try to measure it yeah. you try to attach it yeah to, it, to try to experience it to try yeah. to look at it from some now, once that point is gone so it is the conference that's true infinity but then at this point you don't even you don't even see what uh, there's infinity anymore yeah. the end of infinite bra right. <laughs> And, 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 and so goes with all those notions about like distance and depth. Yeah. Even just like, you know, clouds here, the clouds is over yeah. here, the screen is here. All that's, right. that I eventually get this up. It's like a uh, VR goggle, man. Right. You know, it's, you know, you're in a virtual world. There's depth and distance and colors and character that you can see hints. But then you know they're not real. And that's what Buddhist, that means by, um, infinite really no inherent existence right so when you take off the goggles the exact same thing happens. yeah it's just a fabrication like looking at your own hand right now and looking at the hand of the VR goggle it's the same thing that's going on yeah and uh there's no depth here there's no depth right? Right, right. so it's like you're permanently stuck in a VR set yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that again going back to the responsibility like wars like inconsistent like you've never actually seen yourself like, yeah you, you actually don't actually know what you're looking at yeah like so, even just like whole st well, notion of, like, the, of the self you know it's like the only reason why i thought i had a self is because i thought i knew what i was looking at or what i was feeling if i close my eyes and I, there's the image of frankie and popping in my head i know that's me i'm a feeling associated with frankie i know that's me but you don't know what those sensations are, really. Right. Completely inconceivable. Right. Yeah, you don't know what it is apart from the representation of it. Right. But what is the representation of? Nothing. <laughs> yes. yeah. Some formless mystery. <laughs> yeah, it's just a complete mystery. It's a complete it's, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like you kind of also go beyond this whole duality of like idealism versus Right. or like solipsism you find the middle way actually because you realize always mine sure but that doesn't tell you anything about what the mind is that doesn't tell you that you're the only mind that exists so it's not exactly solipsism it's not, it's not exactly materialism either because you never actually experience form with um, you know the, 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 the sensorial and the perceptual uh apparatus and experience it's not exactly physical you touch a rock it's a sensation somewhere it's, nothing out of nowhere right and but you can't also you can't deny the, the existence of an external world either like no one exists so, you know exists. that's just jumping into another just side of the extreme true. so i actually think that's a really great middle way to to, to so be in it. it's like yeah everything is mine. but then it doesn't mean that you're the only mind that exists there's a lot of people that solipsism they just kind of put their, their sense of like this you know brain cost or even the whole idea like everything's conscious or, or like everything's some you know infinite like creator or whatever yeah at the at the end you just, you just don't know yeah just don't know what the fuck is going on. yeah and that's that that's where the beginning is <laughs> yeah right <laughs> well uh, i found what <clears throat> what we um, mentioned in this last bit about VR to be so helpful. Um, so go and put on a VR headset and have the yeah. experience. It's a good way to practice. It's a good way to practice. And, and then also, as we mentioned earlier, there's like all these, when you're doing this VR, you can see it as all these different like icons, right? Of, oh, I am this body mind and name and i see all these other body mind and names and my relation to them my own mm. beliefs and ideas concepts and m my own resistances and all these things these are like the little icons on the vr and so a good way to sort of tune into this as we've been referencing is what happens when all of those things are dissolved all of those 
mm -hmm. so all those solidities are decontracted. They're unwinded, unknotted, untangled. And then the headset knows itself um, and also does not know how crazy, mysterious, whatever this is, is. Yeah. And it's a big thing to ask a heads a headset an a headset entity to to ask itself are you actually your identity and location right so that's if you really want to get to the needle fast ask yourself that and inquire into that and mm. and retain a high level of focus during do nothing and vipassana style inquiry and very quickly um, you'll unwind it more and more and you'll become more kind of bouncy and playful and loving in the whole field. And it's just, it's sort of, it's what you seek, but you're kind of looking for it in the VR headset itself instead of in um, sort of unwinding all of the contractions of the headset. Yeah. Yeah. Or just ask the, the VR person how he's saying it be if his friend or him put on the VR set and thinks that the character is actually him or like the, the depth and distance depth and locations in the video game are actually the there. Yeah. So you actually waking up from the identification to that one character so to the entire game. Yeah. That and that's where the, you know, why people call it God, you know, God realization. God it's, it's, right. yeah, it's, you wake yeah, up to the right. entire feel of experience. The totality of experience, yeah. No inside or outside. No center, no locations, no directions. There's not even a source of attention, right? Because like every single particle, quote unquote particle, every single corner in this field of the VR, you can call it where. It's not like the the, the main character of VR is actually looking at other characters or interacting with them. You know, it's just the whole game that's just playing itself, interrupting itself, and knowing itself. Uh, yeah. I love that. Um, I, I'm going to put that as the quote in the thumbnail. Waking up from identification with the one character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that the character can still be there, of course. You know? It's just like... Now you can express it even more freely. Yeah. And then another video game analogy is, is Wicked is kind of like being in a game and then you turn into it, jump out of the screen, turn into it. Now you have all those ecos. Now you can just go with that without any other. Mm -hmm. Now you're playing the game, not the finite game. Yeah. 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 And when you, you talked about this earlier, I think it's so beautiful um, is that the sharpness of the intellect as it sort of drops, it relaxes itself and its attachment to all the icons and whatnot and drops more into the heart and into the gut and into emptiness and love. Everything. Right, everything, nothing. As it does that, the this it, it's inexplicable. It's like a new dimension of sageness opens up and like childlike innocence has re-emerged. Uh, and... Um, <clears throat> So like when someone starts, um, when they say something like, do you even know about this thing? And then you just look at them and you're like, no, I don't know. What is that? Tell I me. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And as soon as, as soon as you say that, you learn that you're, the power is actually there. That's where the power is to say that. Yeah. yeah. It's not to s fight back with a sword and to, I know what it is. I don't have, I'm not, I'm good. I know, you know, that's, um, and, um, <clears throat> something totally new as a, as an intelligence that's way more, exactly. way well, more yeah. intelligence. Thing. Yeah. That's all that right. it, I, I always said right, the human intellect, it's, it's just a speck of what us within this infinite field, even a shapeshifter. Uh, right. Right. And yeah, even just like, if I go like this, that thing changes forever, right? Yeah. So, and then it's almost like it's bizarre to think that 
Okay, if you if you're playing the Batman game, you desire to think that Batman game exists. It doesn't. It's only the Batman game. And then when the Batman moves, the whole world is rendered with him. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's the experience right now. It's like the past and the future, even distance, space, time, all that stuff are just constant. You know, so like Maryland right now doesn't exist. Even, even the bathroom rent exists until I like, render it. Right. right. So it's like this moment, moment render, and that's not a really good analogy for like impermanence. Yeah, yeah. And it's just constantly shifting. Yeah, it never stays uh, like a nanosecond. Yeah. But then you can't really realize impermanence without dissolving the center because the center is always going to try to like right. take snapshots of the world, like try to solidify it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, recently you also shared it like uh, uh as you just spoke about it as a rendering it's that the whole universe moves to the bathroom the whole With, yeah 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 as yeah. as yes. the universe moves to the bath like that's what it's 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 the actual fundamental energy or vibration or the atomic units etc that are doing the moving itself to that location yeah. to empty its bladder um yeah yes and that's also i think to depend on origination as well it's like when you walk the universe is walking and this is infinite webs of conditioning yes. and cause and effect that's make every little thing happen right right and then just yeah, yeah like just, just yeah, going to the right. bathroom just and pooping bathroom. it's just the universe pooping yeah. and then it's, it's again it's really hard to, to uh to communicate to, to, to different people because if you just tell this to someone who hasn't gone to the show, I think you're talking about like real science or like. Well, oh, well, like, well, there's and I mean, there's a there's a really I feel more and more openness to this as um, the way that it's expressed becomes more and more clear. So when we were sharing that there's a going to the bathroom what's being shared is that there's a dependency on this wat planetary water cycle and the consumption of fresh water from the faucet systems of taiwan or the united states and then there's the dependency of the bladder reaching a point that then wants to uh, as it expands and now it wants to contract and empty out the water into the plumbing system that then goes right back into the hydrological cycle after a, a purification of sorts. So meaning that you're the whole web of dependencies, that like you're that whole endless um, infinite web that is that sensate experience. So, and if the identity is sort of decentralized to that web um it can feel more free and more empty and more loving and in and, and effortless and flow um not a doer in the center and so i feel like the analogies are becoming more and more um available as though the the bite of the apple and we've i feel like we've also talked about this but that comes from the whole dependent web of the agricultural system itself and the transit, the supply chains, the grocer, the monetary system, the exchange of the money for it or growing it on the apple tree, either scenario. And then it goes through the digestive process and it empties itself. So, and it goes right back into the cycle. So that tuning into dependent origination and these webs that are endless in all directions that make the morphing of sensate reality that decentralizing your identity into that is its wholeness it's love um so that i feel like it's becoming more readily available um recognizing these these dependent webs and how everything shapeshifts like that and sort of being the energy that's doing that shapeshifting yeah but at the, at the end, even uh, impermanence gets you know as well, uh, because there's not even time for the rising. Uh, yeah, that's when you get, like non-rising, like right. passing non-arising. 
Yeah, but it, uh, I think everything that everything on the conventional level still stands. It's not like we talk about like oh, everything, whatever. You know, uh, we don't have a self. I mean, there's no space, no time. I mean, uh, on the level, that's true. But on the conventional level, they, they still exist right. to play with. Them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and being and not being at the same time exactly yeah. absolute and relative at the same time and mm -hmm. whatever that is and isn't is blah, 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 blah. you know it's that that you can't say it and you can sort of feel and you know be that and not be it but it's I've not I've noticed that actually being more tuned into the absolute reality um is sort of what the relative reality is in a sense seeking. So mm -hmm. yeah. So don't don't get pulled out of that just because there's a ton of social conditioning that is um saying that Oh, you can't not be your name. You can't be unilocal and non-local. You can't do that. And then getting sort of pulled out of, of that to play in some relative game when all it sort of wants is to watch you just spaciously love their statements. Um, and uh, so, and sort of let them gravitate more and more towards a deeper um, insight into uh, an absolute reality. So when you talk about the proliferation, uh, the, the, the way I like to put it is just the, the, the way that sensations stop clinging onto the sensations. So I get the, at the microscopic, sensual level, sensorial level. At the microscopic level of um there's no more clinging because all clinging comes from sensations trying to tangle themselves, entangle themselves to other sensations and try to take credit from other sensations. That's the source of all. So I think that the thing that Robert Berger and I talked about is the, the complete cessation of any sensation, any cluster of sensations trying to correspond to another cluster, to entangle another cluster. And one of the last things to like untangle is like this direction of it. Yeah. It's like, even after the sphere is dissolved, there, there still can be a little, like, almost like a ghost somewhere in there that wants to feel like it's looking at things. Yeah, yeah or sometimes things in here might get solidified when you're certain things, especially things that are things that are uh, conditioning. You can sort of sense it literally like trying to like pretend to look at that object from the subject. Uh, so that arrow, that's the, the picture that the guy, right. um, the guy from, we should know that. Uh, it's uh, such that was, a good one. Yeah, put that in right here. Uh, one of the that, best uh, ones. Yeah, what is it? The first stage is like the ego conventional perception. The second stage, right. um, everything mind, um, mind yeah. Yeah. where you see yourself and everything, your, your consciousness expands to be everything, that's the capital self. And then there's the no self. And then the last page, the, it's no self without pain direction of attention. Right. I think that's a great, great Victoria representation. Yeah, it's just that, um, yeah, the air of attention, even even just like sitting down trying to meditate, you see that just directing your attention to the object of meditation, it's also just happening by itself. Uh, uh, and the, 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 to get rid of the viewer or to dissolve the viewer is one of the that I had to take uh, it's that sense of intention, the intention of doing something. Where exactly is the point that you made this decision versus the, that decision? You can't find that point, just like you can't find the point between my past, uh, within the future, or between the, when this thing ends. Yes, it's the same thing, correct? Uh, yes. uh, goes along with the, 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 the diction thing, too. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, they did this 
neuroscience like experiment a long time ago. It was one of the most famous experiments. Like when I tell people about this whole dirt shit, like my dad, he's automatically testing all these experiments. And so, you know, scientists tell you to press a button and then you press the button when you like it, and then they measure your brain waves. Somebody like brains, neurons, like made decisions for you, like the signals of you pressing your finger, press that button. Mm-hmm. That decision to press this button over that button already happened before you consciously decide to press that button. Yeah. Something like that. But with meditation, you can actually see that. Uh, play out real yes. and just yeah. try it before you like pick up your phone you can see the intention of that it's happening before you move your hand behind that phone but where is that intention of the intention of moving your hand to move that phone you can't trace it back to anything again going back to the dependent origination is dependent upon like infinite webs of conditioning uh, you can't trace back to the source where it's like that's the source where I decide to move my hand uh, if I knew what a great way to deconstruct the center and the arrow of attention. Yeah, the center of the arrow of attention is, is yeah. really crucial. I feel like a lot of people talk about this. Because with the center of attention deconstructing, you also dissolve the background. That's also one of the last things to dissolve is the background of experience. Right. Like people who are like, I think I was like awareness or like spaceness right. or, right. you know, Godhead, usually they still have the background as an object. Because they're still a foreground or a subject that's trying right. to clean right. that. Right. Really free itself you know, mm-hmm. to that background, yeah. and without the direction of attention, there's no one in the center, and there's no subject looking at the objects. So the background, the foreground becomes one. Right. Yeah. right. So now every sensation is aware of themselves without any sensation trying to take credit from no another another concept sensation, and that the duration of karmas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all cameras that uh, comes down to that really <laughs> just sensation trying to entangle other sensations <laughs> yeah yeah and then you see that there's yeah, not yeah. even you, uh, that you can't even watch thoughts anymore, watch thoughts anymore. yeah because once yeah, you dissolve the observer the, or the direction of attention you realize that thoughts are embedded with sensations that simply cognize itself so you have a thought and then you think you have another, you think you're watching that thought by doing mindfulness, or by applying the direction of attention to that thought. But that thought is already gone by the time you did that. So you have the thought, and then you have another thought of you imagining yourself watching that thought, but those two thoughts, A, B, are disconnected. So it's not like thought A, and then, oh, there's thought A, now I'm witnessing, watching thought A. Now this is awareness, this is the true self. I'm disidentified from thoughts. That's another illusion because the source of attention is another construct. Yeah. Because even that act is proliferation. It's like there's a new identity here trying to like untangle this sort of a grasping grasping, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. All all sensations simply liberate themselves. There's no grasping anywhere. And, and that goes back to what we were saying earlier about the surrender. Center arising to grasp on to a sensation and tell a story about it. And that is also the next sensation, the next whatever is arising. Yeah, yeah, yeah and not just story, but physically entangled. Uh, right, yeah, cellularly, yeah, I viscerally like a, entangled, yeah. Yeah, I think story always comes to, it's always the physical entanglement that creates the story. That's why right. I keep back to the notion of this whole process of waking been a very biological yes, process. Yes. Yes. The equanimity yeah. is cellular. It's cellular. Yeah. It's it cellular. Like the only reason why you don't feel like you're biophysical unity, is another way to say because it. of the physical solidity in the body. Right? That's why body scan is so powerful for me. Right. Yeah. That is the only reason why I don't feel like the, the sky. You no, know, your 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 sky is because right. of the physical solidity that creates the contractions, the constrictions, the tensions. The the separations it's all physical and all the traumas are more physical yeah. right. exactly yeah. that's why the chakras are like you know, such an important thing it's not like chakras and this is. chakras are just going to the body manifested in physical balls it's a store somewhere in your spine yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whole new level of sky and lightness.
Yeah, when yeah, those, totally. When those solidities and contractions are not Pro proliferating, grasping, bringing up the sensation. Just a, like a, yeah, a pure and raw sensate reality and universe fucking up raw without a condom. Yeah. <laughs> you should put that in there. Right, in the, in the I cool think box. that's more like, that, 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 that's my idea. Great, great. Great. Love it. Yep. Yeah, there's so many things that I used to do that, like, they just dropped away. Like, things that I, it's like the whole integration thing going back to the beginning. Like, it just happens by itself. And the more it happens, like a snowball effect. It's like at first, you kind of have to fine tune it. You know, it's kind of have to, like, oh, okay, I got to stay with that conditioning. Oh, I get triggered here. I better not do that. Or, like, all that stuff, but the, 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 yeah, first you kind of have to fine tune it, and then after it, you know, it's more like wired to this kind of level, it's just automatic. It's like reality just not going to take you to places that isn't gonna allow it to manifest itself at the fullest and the deepest and the most perfect way. Like, you know, even though ultimately, even imperfection is perfect, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, like I dropped something that I used to do that. It trigger me, then it's not like I'm even trying to do that anymore. It's not like I'm like making an effort to like, or like yeah. it's really weird, man. But sometimes, <laughs> right. Yeah, do nothing meditation is like the best but in practice for integration. Yeah. And you realize how much you were contract con contracting before. We've been doing Vipassana as well, like contraction. Unbelievable. Vipassana meditation, like it presupposes the error of attention. Yeah. yeah. But I'll I'll, I'll keep in mind for this as well. It's almost like you're deliberately trying to fabricate a meditator or an observer, so you can design it. It's just like the spiritual. So you go on this path to like deliberately construct a spiritual secret so you can dissolve it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And the whole time there was no center, <laughs> no one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a big joke. Right. Yeah. Just that non centered no oneness is love. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, it's a it's mystery. <laughs> and if it, it, it feels it feels like it, it feels like it's equanimity, like equanimity. Kind of, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think equanimity yeah. is a good word. Yeah, love, love has its yeah, it's, um, I, I, it's right. It's love too because unity. It's like it contains it contains all, but it's a little different from the kind of like when I was going to the last stage or the kind of mini phase when I was like feeling a lot of. Was here. Right. That's why I don't right. use that word a lot because it's cold love, 
like you said, it's cold. Cool. Like, yeah. it's a, love is a, it's a great word for it, but, but, but when you say love, people are going to associate with like, right, right. like the kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. explosion or Mr. All that's our, all well, that's a part of the right. process. Yeah. I'm just saying it's a little distinct in flavor. There is right. a little distinct, like you said, it's a little different. But, but, but the only different again is just the, the level of, you know, how much have you been loved? You know, the, the, up to a point where you feel like everything's love. You feel, because you're still like, usually the love takes on the chest. It's like when you're still waking up on the chest. That's when you, you talk to you, a lot of people are like, quality and penis, not about, about love. Uh, mm-hmm. Because they're, they're, they're literally, the chest hasn't been taken off. So they're, they're, uh, it's to here. <laughs> so that's the paradox about sexuality. Whatever, it is, whatever feeling that you experience is actually the part that you haven't felt. Right. <laughs> like Kundalini, you still like feel Kundalini, right. feeling the shock, experiencing all those shock right. 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 It's, it's the right? The solidity that hasn't felt. Right. You still like talking about God, you haven't dissolved that part. Right. Right. That's me, God. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like the the, the whatever we can. It's, oh, it's uh, equanimity, yeah. Not like happiness without conditioning, it's another really good. Uh, yeah, whatever you're feeling as a ground is the curricula for dissolution. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's really good. Yeah. Oh, right, good. right, right, right. Oh. First, you ground to witness, now you need to that. Now my ground is like, you know, is loving energy, you dissolve that. But then the thing about this is like, after you dissolve everything, then when you put back those lenses of perception, they're like we said, like the intellect that you let go of, they become even more, yeah, even more like, you know, more pronounced, more integrated, fuller. Yeah. And the equanimity is also sort of the equalization that the uncreated is the creator, the unmanifest is the manifest. That mm-hmm. the void is manifestation. That, exactly. Um, spaci- yeah. Spaciousness is stories. Um, or all- cessation is uh, appearance. Yeah. Source is appearance. Yes. Yes, uh, that's great. And it is what it is. Yes, yes, yes. It's nothing behind. And I love that. The equalization is the equanimity. You know, the oh, middle, that's and great. The, yeah. And the, and the middle, middle way again. Middle way again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like when you talk about like symmetry. You know how the, the psychedelic people, they talk about symmetry? I think the same same guy that wrote the article that he wrote an article about the middle DNA, how like. Everything's like symmetrical. Like every point, not just point to every other point, but points to itself. So like at the end of suffering is to realize symmetry. Like the mind is only symmetrical when there's no grasping of one sensation to another sensation. Right. And what we just said earlier, it reminds me of like just the perfect symmetry of the, of awareness. Yeah. Nothing stands Nothing for anything stands. else. Nothing grasps for anything else. Grasp. Everything stands alone by itself, liberates it's itself. itself. It is itself. It is itself. Yes. Uh, in its own, in its own space, which is nowhere. <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> it's the relief that we seek and Did you ever feel like there was a part of you that still wanted, like, it's like, it's like you had all this energy of like seeking and sharing and like, you know, realizing in forever. And then when majority of that, um, do you ever, did you feel like the rest of the conditioning wants to grab hold of them and you can't? And it feels like you, you feel kind of like, like blue balls. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it feels like the surf. It feels like the surfacing, um, and the and the dissolving, and sometimes the surfacing expresses itself, um, and that's usually done in a in like a safe, spacious container, um, like a loving. A blanket like a loving warm blanket um so it feels the, like this is the res a grass a grass found on the sea it's full condition that way there's nothing to grasp. so it, right right yeah right know. right yeah. it's just it's just a it's like a a constant um like non-resistance yeah um, a flow flowfulness like where yeah there the that proliferation of or of grasping it, it's not yeah it's not it it kind of blue bally um the surfacing can feel yeah blue bally um where like yeah the sense of self wants to like arise and create. wants to reconstruct this now but it can't right 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 yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. it wants it and it wants to create some sort of a new cycle so, yeah, right, a new right. cyclone of of whatever um yeah, yeah malevolences yeah. and and stuff yeah. but and then again the only, the only way to uh let that go is to surrender that's the, that's no other way right because even if you practice mindfulness or any kind of direction of uh attention every time you try to direct attention to something you start to the process of vibration. yeah right. and, And it's like, it's, it's it's kind of been this kind of awkward position where you can't really talk. It's really hard. It's hard to talk to the spirit. And it's, it's not like it's hard to talk to them. Hard to talk to them. Like, it's like, the spiritual people uh, don't get what you're saying, in a sense. And like the homies don't get what you're saying. <laughs> and like before you, you can like, kind of like go people and be like oh i had this realization yeah, too he's like right. uh, into this genre blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, right <laughs> there's a new silence that don't yeah yeah and then yeah so and, you 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 and, also you come as well yeah. and the and everyone the spirit the spiritual people that you were talking to just look at you and they just see goneness and yet presence and then the regular people look at you and you just play with them in their regular socially conditioned thing because you, you can't um not uh when it's brought up like just staring as the abyss at something solid that feels like it's solid doesn't it doesn't compute it like i've as i as i've done that before that sol that solidity wanted to punch this in in its in its face and so that's sort of the type of thing that um that's this new whatever however it begins expressing itself it's some way that like plays in all of these capacities but um another fun way to play with it is sort of like it's very iridescent um so it's It's very, it's very, te I guess it's also very textural and like tasteful in a way. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Like you're really very, tuned into the sen you're really tuned into the sense, the sensation. And, and it's, it's very visceral. Visceral, right. It's very physical. That's why I can't, you know, physical. 
describe not just the process of it that's why they call it a bomb yeah it just feels like it like Earlier, when you walk in the bathroom, when you walk on the street, it feels like the whole walking body. It's, a, it's very visceral, nice. very sensitive, wow. and very like it's not mental. Uh, right. It's very concrete, uh, even though it's formal, uh, nice. but it's very yeah. It's meat, air, flesh, and blood. air embodied. Yeah, yeah air embodied. Uh, it's yeah. almost like air. It's solidifying back. In Form, but you know the form is a hologram but it's, it's still a texture yes yes yeah it's not like doing that chest like, like uh like, right yeah all right. lying you're you're like unbelievably tuned into the sensate yeah right Wait, i gotta recharge my hope just give me one second the last thing we talked about i like that the physicality that's why they say chop wood water right 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 it's just so grounded in everything that you do yeah yeah we we've also been playing with it as a air element and an earth element buddha had this inquiry oh, so he was like buddha. dividing everything to like earth yeah. element fire element like, and what's another one everything. earth air fire water yeah 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 so in the beginning yeah, stages yeah, yeah. of your so inquiry in you kind of noting you just note everything is oh this is you walk in on the earth and you're like oh this is earth element oh it's impersonal and you feel emotion oh this is just the fire element oh this is it's just the element of nature and then you feel like you know thoughts or whatever you're like oh that's just the the air element whatever at the end the buddha unified everything and said there's only the earth element yeah. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So There's only yeah. what is yeah. this yeah. physicality. Yeah. So even your thoughts and emotions yeah. or like your highest states of consciousness, yeah. when you get stuck up in them, when you get contracted yeah. by yeah. them, yeah. you just label them as oh, that's just earth just element. Them as, oh, that's my thoughts, my feelings is no, no oh, different from the trees, the birds, the clouds. Right. Yeah. Right. And the air is no different right. from what like the mud. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hence the natural state. <laughs> natural state. Natty. Natty. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's like the air is full with endless um, symbols that can then be used if you find the needles in the haystack to decondition the physicality, the earthiness mm -hmm. of it. Um, and I love that. It's just a new level of absolute perfection when doing nothing. This is the freedom from the, the need to measure. From the need to measure. Yeah, like, from the need to measure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just going back to what I was saying before, before about the point and the circumference, the right? Yeah. The relationship right. between the point and the circumference the only exists because of the ego trying to measure it. But the when the proliferation measure, of that center is gone, everything you know everything is based on measurement, you know, like time, no, space. The ego is based on measurement. I'm better than you. I'm you know stronger than you, smarter than you, more spiritual advanced than you. Um, depth, this is closer to me than that, yeah. That's good, the cessation of measurement. Also the whole notion of trying to understand some question. Yeah. Wait, that's like, another, that's another good question to answer. Angle. All that wouldn't exist without measurements. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's a pretty direct pointing, the cessation of measurement. Yeah, the sensation of measurement. Yeah. Even like, that's why, you know, we, yeah. in the middle of this talk, you talk about how even letting go of infinity yeah, right. and like eternity. Even like, that's why, you that's know. Still that's still kind of presupposes the kind of measurement. Presupposed. You know, like endless, endless space, space endless or like space some kind of like, like time that's like, you know, that goes on forever, like, you know, right? It's forever. timeless. Yeah. 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 That's why it's really hard to put into words because, because words in themselves are our measure, tools of measurements. Yeah. 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 That's what made. Nice. That's a great. I feel like that's a great place to wrap.
That's a great pointer. <laughs> I mean, what more can we like the end of measurement? There's nothing much to say. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Even the passion I'm is like all concentrated. I'm more concentrated this moment than the next. I'm more awake yesterday than today. Fuck. <laughs> That's how measurements. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you see the new Batman movie? My gosh, still haven't seen it yet. It's on the list. I've heard it's amazing, though. It's amazing, yeah. It's a really different take on Batman. It's like a really good mixture and in a middle way, a really good middle it's way like of really Christopher Nolan's and, and middle way, middle depiction of Batman Christopher realism. Nolan's. And Batman. Team Burton's depiction of Batman Burton's in, like, you know, this fantastical, Batman. like, gothic, uh, gothic imaginary uh, environment. Because, like, criticism people had of, like, Nolan was, like, oh, it was too realistic. Oh, the Batman looks so fucking weird. It's how I Batman felt like that, too. So I felt like Batman weird. looked too out of, place out of place in this perfect ordered world. Because Christopher Nolan is very, like, you know, logical, very, like, everything's straight line. Every cut is, like, uh, it's totally, like, a left brain kind of um, filmmaker. And then it works. I mean, it Batman works. definitely works. From his Batman definitely works. But it's a, it's a, it's a sort of like a response. It's an antithesis to Tim Burton's Batman. Tim Burton's Batman is like super poetic in a sense, like very theatrical and super right brain. And the new one is like the, the Matt Reeves one is like a mixture of both. Yeah, that's the progression of any path too. You know, like you know, Hegel say you have like a thesis, and then antithesis, then you have synthesis. So every system of learning or progression comes from that, you know, at first the dualities, you know, first you have this end of the duality and that end of the and the fusion of the two that transcends both uh, sides of the duality. And I think the new Batman movie did that. But then the new Batman movie is going to become the new thesis. And then in the future, there's going to be an antithesis in response to that, forming a new thesis. That's the evolution, the progression of everything from the microscopic level to the macroscopic level to the cosmic level. That's another way to perceive like contraction and expansion. That's another way things. to perceive like yeah. and expansion. And then like the mask of the Batman is like almost looks like Henry. Like, like, like the mask of the Batman is like, like the before. Like, like you can actually see his expressions like, really well. Expressions. Like, before you can never really see what you Batman is thinking Batman when he's thinking like when he's in the suit. suit. But then for some reason the new version some, like, you can actually you can it's actually, very mental. It's like the most mental Batman. It's just like thoughts. It's, there's a lot of like thoughts, you know. What does it really feel like psychologically like to like be Batman, really? right? And, and I feel like Nolan's version was like very grand. It's like, oh, here's a sky view of Gotham City, and it's like you never see any close up of like Batman like doing like picking his fingernails and shit. <laughs> like, but then like in Mary's version, you can see like this just like little details of like that. These little textures of sensations that like actually points to how Batman is feeling like at the microscopic level. Uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. You should check it out. Uh, yeah. Nice. And it's whole, whole movie is about like trauma release too. <laughs> it's just about it's about the the traumatized the tra traumatic. It's about how Batman dissolves his conditionings. I don't think they got into too much of that in the, the early movies. <laughs> It's like Batman doing shadow work, and it's very universal too. I'm still only like twenty four percent on my Arkham Knight game. <laughs> that game is fucking hard, man.
feels good feeling it like a magnetism and a, a morphing of that magnetism. That's good for me. My pleasure. I'm excited to. I think this talk is very different from the other ones we had. <laughs> Right. I mean, we get, yeah. we get into some of the stuff, but um, from a different like, it's almost like coming in from the outside more now, yeah. but also within as well. It's both, you know. But also within as well. It's exactly. Both, yeah. both of those. Yeah, yeah, both of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. both of those. Going back That's to great. like the thing we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. The thing from the boundless, from that outermost in, and also from the inner. Yes, most. expansion yes. and contraction, exactly. Expansion yeah. and contraction, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the end, your realization end, kind of just goes back into you. Back it's like, there's nothing outside. Yeah, you said o outside. ocean, ocean absorbed back into the. Dream. Yeah, yeah. For those, yeah, for those yeah, for people that didn't know this analogy, at first you're a droplet, the like the ego is a droplet, and then and as then you go on the spiritual path, the droplet path, goes into the ocean, the ocean and then starts to dissolve into the ocean. Exactly. That's the process the of the solution, and they become the infinite ocean. That's where the awareness, the consciousness, God consciousness phase. You feel like you're everything, but then the, like but then the, the whole ocean is absorbed ocean back into the drop, and then by that point, both vanish. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing yeah. outside of it. That, that also goes with the, the uh, VR yeah, analogy. That, that also goes yeah. with the VR. Yeah. But it's not solipsism, though. But it's not solipsism. It's not materialism either, nor idealism. It's not materialism either, nor idealism. Right. I've been looking forward to how this would morph and. It seems very fruitful, and I'm I'm really excited about this continuing to blossom and us uh, playing together in person and creating more and just seeing what arises. It's just it's very it tastes really good. It feels really good. It, it tastes like it tastes, it tastes like, like you. It tastes like you. It tastes like home. It just tastes like what you always are before the conditioning piled up. Right, so it's not like you're transcending into some other worldly realm. Like, I mean, there is that, but at, at the end, you're just like, that's what you have always been. It's just, just you, that, you know, yeah, just like, self or no self. This is what you are. You know. Any final words? Yeah, that's. Let's do this little final bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is, I think, our fifth conversation in our series. Yes. And. It's a it's a special series. It's a it's probably my favorite one on the channel. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, I mean, I have the most like expressive, expressive talks, with talks with you. Like, I have the most talks with you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done another podcast more than once. Hey, that's so beautiful, man. It's so cool. And I I feel um, there's been a lot of good like feedback. Um, so we would love to hear from you guys. Um, you guys want to drop a comment and let us know your take on this uh, fifth episode. We would love to hear from you. Um, uh, also, um, yeah, let us know how you feel about the evolution of these conversations because uh, it's been a while since the last one. We would love to hear from you about that. And um, I don't know, any ideas on collaborations that you guys want to see, how you'd like to see this continuing to blossom and play? Um, and um, <clears throat> also, uh, if you felt like this episode was insightful for you, uh, like the video. Um, also, subscribe if you haven't yet. Share the video. That's another really great way to continue generating the catalyst. And also frank's social channels are all linked below also so go in uh definitely check out some of his most recent content on youtube his most recent video distillations have been fantastic so go and check those out if you haven't yet subscribe over there 
and also go and check out his Instagram, his website. Um, go and check him out, follow there. Also, Frank's still doing coaching. Yes. Also. Yeah. So send a DM over for... I think email I think email is better for that. I, I don't check my DMs that much right. anymore. Um, right, right. Oh, do, you, do you have my website? Do you have a website? Just yeah, my, yeah, my website. A, yeah, I, ha- I have a coaching uh, thing on my website. You can just... Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's probably the best way. I mean, um, reaching out. Yeah, to Frank I think for email. And d- via email, email yeah. yeah. Uh, you can find my email on website. Find my email on website. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I'm just really grateful for us and this vibe. It's mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, in that was a great time, man. Yeah, it's coming soon. It's coming. Um, <clears throat> nice. Yeah, that uh, that feels really complete. Yeah, you can find our links also in the bio below. Uh, check those out. And just really feel the perfection when doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, stop measuring. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All right. Bye, guys. Infinite love. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>